I'm going to read Bring Me Some Apples and I'll Make You a Pie, a story about Edna Lewis by Robin Gorley. Bring me some apples and I'll make you a pie. Whippoorwill, calls the little gray bird. Whippoorwill, whippoorwill. The melody echoes through the quiet woods and wends its way down the hill to the just waking farm. This is the sound Edna's been waiting for all winter long. Time to get up, she says, poking her sleepy little sister. I hear the whippoorwill. That means it's gathering time. I'm ready for the taste of spring. Whippoorwill! After breakfast, Edna and her sister head out to the fields to pick wild strawberries, the first fruit of the season. Mama says, better hurry. You'll need to outrun the rabbits to get all the berries. Daddy says, fill as many baskets as you can. Larder's empty. Sister says, one for the basket and one to taste. Edna says, there'll be strawberry shortcake for dessert tonight. Yum. A few days later, with the chill almost gone from the early morning air, Auntie and the children gather wild greens before the leaves unfurl. Mustard, purslane, dandelion, and peppery watercress, too. Mmm, mmm, says Auntie. A fresh, crisp salad to nourish the heart and the soul as well as the body. Edna recites, But I have never tasted meat, nor cabbage, corn, or beans, nor milk or tea that's half as sweet as the first mess of greens. Soon the catbird is back and the dogwoods are blooming. Edna follows Daddy behind the plow, pressing her bare feet into the soft, just-turned earth. The plow tosses up roots from the nearby sassafras trees, each piece a prize in Edna's hands. Edna says, I'll make hot tea from the roots and sweeten it with milk and molasses. Daddy says, sassafras hail heals what ails you. Sassafras makes you feel all right. Drink the tea in the morning and sleep all night. Spring turns into summer, and Edna leads Daddy to a beehive she's found, deep in the fragrant honeysuckle woods. He breaks the comb and gathers all the delicious dark amber nectar. Edna dips her finger in the bucket. Honey on hot biscuit sweetens the morning, she says, smacking her lips. Then she recites, a swarm of bees in May is worth a load of hay. A swarm of bees in June is worth a silver spoon. A swarm of bees in July is not worth a fly. A warm breeze is blowing and it's cherry picking time. Everyone races to the trees and up the ladders to fill buckets and bellies with the ripe fruit. Edna says, a deep dish cherry pie. That'll be the reward for all of our hard work. Brother says, Look at that bird in the cherry tree. He's eating them one by one. He's shaking his bill. He's getting his fill as down his throat they run. When the wild blackberries are ripe, Edna, sister, and brother forge early in the day before thunderstorms start to rumble. Sweet berries stain hands and lips and teeth blue. Brother says, the ripe ones come easiest off the vine, and the lowest ones are the sweetest. Watch out for snakes. They like berries, too. Edna calls across the brambles. How about we make a summer pudding or a cobbler? Or just have a bowl full of berries with sugar and cream? Oh, the blackberry. Summer pudding? Blackberry cobbler? Long about midsummer, it's time to gather sun ripened peaches from the orchard. Edna eats them straight from the tree, and the warm, sweet juice runs down her chin. Mama says, Six perfect peaches make a perfect pie. That's true, Edna says, but the best dessert on a hot summer day is peach ice cream, and there'll be plenty of willing hands to help turn the crank on the ice cream bucket. Peaches, Auntie sighs, pure as angels, sweet as love. Yum, yum. 
Edna plucks garden warm tomatoes from a heavy vine with fruit and places them in Mama's outstretched apron. Southern dirt mixed with southern sun makes a right sassy tomato, Mama says. My favorite lunch above all is a tangy tomato sandwich. Sugar baby watermelons ripen in the fields. As the sun sets, the family gathers round and Daddy plugs the melons till he finds a perfect one. Melons are just like friends, Granny says. Gotta try ten before you get a good one. Everyone savors the crisp, cool, juicy slices. The children spit the seeds as far as they can. Daddy says, save some of those seeds to plant for new melons. Between slurps, Edna says, save the rinds. We'll make watermelon pickle. In high summer, even mornings are hot and dry. Edna, brother, and sister stand at the edge of the cornfield in the shade of the pine trees, where the night's coolness still hovers. Corn on the cob makes the best summer supper, says brother. I say it's corn pudding that does that, says Edna. Skillet cornbread is my favorite, says sister. Then she sings. Wake up, Jake, and di days a breaking. Frying pans on and cornbread's baking. Bacon in the pan, coffee in the pot. Get up now and get it while it's hot. Out in the vegetable patch, tiny rows of beans are ready for the picking. Bushel baskets fill quickly as three pairs of hands make a game of pulling beans from the bushes. A bowl of speckled buttered beans for dinner tonight, says sister. Rattlesnake and Christmas beans next, says Edna. We're rich as kings as long as we have beans, says Mama. Oh, I love how this family appreciates everything that grows in their garden. Edna skips beside brother down the farm lane to the leafy vineyard. Sunny clusters of muscadine grapes grow in wild abundance. Vines twine to the treetops. Ripe grapes make a perfect afternoon feast. I love the jam these grapes will make, Edna says. Come winter, it'll be a little taste of summer. Brother nods. On a cold day, there's nothing more comforting than a thick slice of bread piled high with Mama's grape jam. Mm -mm. On a coming of winter morning, there's still one more harvest to gather. The leaves are falling and so are the nuts. Ping! Pecans and walnuts clatter on the rooftop. The family fills baskets full of them. Edna cracks the shells and picks out the tiny nut meats. Nut butter cookies and walnut bread will taste mighty good, she says. Then Granny sings, raccoon up the pecan tree, possum on the ground. Raccoon shakes the pecans down, possum passes around. I love how everybody in this family sings along as they do their work. It makes it go so much better. As the first snow falls, Edna inspects the cellar. It is full of good things. Nut cakes and cookies, honey and jam, three kinds of dried beans, rows of canned corn, jars of tomatoes, and crocks of pickles line the shelves. You can never have too much summer, says Edna. The house fills with the aromas of cooking, warming the spirit on a cold afternoon. Long winter ahead, says Daddy. Without winter, there'd be no spring, says Mama. That's right, says Edna. And come spring, we'll hear the whippoorwill call. Then we'll all go a-gathering again. This story about Edna Lewis um, tells us that Edna Lewis was born in 1916 in Freetown, Virginia a community founded by her grandfather and two other emancipated slaves. The people of Freetown were farmers, and they lived by the seasons, growing and harvesting their own crops, gathering nature's wild bounty. And here is a picture of Edna Lewis, who is in the dining room of a very fancy restaurant in Brooklyn, where she brought her wonderful cooking skills. And in the back of the book, there's a recipe for strawberry shortcake, corn pudding, apple crisp, pecan drops, nut butter squares, 
Mm. If you'd like to make that, make sure you bring me a piece. Thank you for listening.